Hello, Miss Snow here, and I'm going to talk to you about the English Language and English Literature Curriculum for 2023 to 2024. So, just in case you need any emails, um, my email is there on the screen, and I've put um, Will Lentil's email, who is Deputy Subject Leader of English, there as well. So, the main um, mantra of our curriculum in English is that literature is about the endless challenges and thrills of being human and to understand literature is to understand about life. Now, that thread stems from year 7 all the way through to the year, end of year 13 um, and that's what it all comes back to, that whilst children do sit exams, we teach what's in the exam because it's important um, and it relates back to human nature um, and the human condition. So our curriculum intent statement is there on the board um, and I'll just pause a moment so that you can have a read of it and it just kind of unpicks what we're all about. So as you can see, everything that we... Um, teach and everything that we talk about in English comes back to universality and the human condition and we give um, children a diverse selection of novels, poems, speeches, plays as it says to teach them about relationships, relationships between texts, relationships between humans. So here are the year 11 teachers um, and their email addresses should you need them. And these are the English GCSEs. So a brief guide is that your child um, will receive two qualifications in English. One for English language and one for English literature. Both qualifications have two exams. So paper one of English language is the fiction exam. Paper two of English language is the non-fiction exam. And paper one of English literature is Macbeth and A Christmas Carol, and that is the extract exam, so they get an extract of the text. And then paper two is in spectacles, power and conflict poetry, and unseen poetry, which is the closed book exam. So they don't get the text and they don't get um, extract in paper two. So here is just a brief outline of the year 11 curriculum for the whole year. So we start with language paper two. And then what we do on Friday, our Friday lessons is literature. So we do Macbeth, um, Unseen Poetry, Inspector Calls, Pound Conflict Poetry, so that they're constantly retrieving um, that knowledge that they need to for their mock exams and the exams in the long run. And then in the spring term, we revise Language Paper 1, um, and again, with an insight into splitting the, the week of lessons to literature as well. And this is year 11 on a page. So you can see that the, the pinkish peaches colours, those are literature lessons. Um, so we try to juggle both qualifications throughout the whole year so that we spend a fair amount of time on both language and literature. Now a lot of year 10 was on literature, so this year is heavy on language, but they sit mocks for all four papers. And you can see at the bottom there that actual summer exams start on Monday the 13th, starting with English Literature Paper 1. So their mock exams this year, they, as I said, they will sit all four English mock exams. And the first two are in November, and those are both Paper 2s. So Language Paper 2 and Literature Paper 2, which is the Unspectacles and Poetry Paper. And then in March, they will sit the paper ones, um, so the fiction paper and the Macbeth and a Christmas Carol paper. And here are the summer 2024 exams. So as I said, the first one is on Monday the 13th of May, um, and we start with literature, and they are a week apart, which is quite nice. And then um, we go into language, paper one on Thursday the 23rd of May. And then what's quite nice between the language papers is that they have half term. So before they sit their last English language paper 2 exam, um, they will have a half term to rest and to revise for that paper as well. So independent study in English, um, we get asked quite often, well, how do we revise for English? It's really hard because um, unlike maths and science, for example, it's, it's often not right or wrong and it's often 
lots of essay practice. So our guidance is that little and often is essential. It's the key to English revision. So in Year 11, they have weekly educate. They also need to be doing literature revision, but they can also do AQA past papers. And the website Save My Exams is a great place to look as well. They have past papers, but they also have um, practice questions on that website that are really useful to use for revision sessions. So ways that uh, students can revise. The main key tip is to timetable your revision carefully, give yourself time off um, and make sure that you're taking lots and lots of breaks. So there's just a key tips to, to study now on the left. And then on the right there, some, just some tips that um, students can do to revise for literature just to start with. So they can think about the plot, characters, themes, context, writer's message and writer's craft. And for poetry, they can talk about the poet's message um, and use of devices. Um, and then on the next side, I'll talk through how they can do some mind maps. So mind mapping in English is a really good way to kind of dump all that knowledge they've got in their brains onto the page, just to see what they know without looking at the text or looking at revision guides. So on the screen there, are some examples of what mind maps can look like. So sometimes students find it useful for Macbeth to think about the character's progression as a wheel and what happens in terms of who dies when. Um, character mind maps for Inspector Calls are also really useful because they will need to have some quotes in their brains to analyse about that character. And then, as you can see in the bottom middle one, that's an Inspector Calls mind map for the whole play. So you have dramatic techniques, context, themes, characters, and sometimes it's really useful for students to dump all of their knowledge and then to look at revision guides to unpack what it is that they might be missing. The one with the post-it notes is really useful as well because then you can hide um, information and check your knowledge, which is quite a good technique. So revision guides to help you with this independent study. The CGP or Collins Snap Revision Guides are really useful for all the literature texts um, and the CGP Language Workbook is also very good um, but the Collins Snap Revision for writing and for reading are both very good for the language qualification. Now if you're thinking online, um, YouTube for Mr Bruff, his videos are fantastic and there are lots of them um, and students can you know, listen to them kind of like a podcast and take notes if they need if they feel that they learn that way um, or they can watch them and he talks through past um, essay examples or past exam questions and he is very knowledgeable when he talks about AQA as well but BBC Bite Size is also a great place to go. So on the next slide are some images of those revision guides that we would suggest and that are also available in the school shop. So the ones on the left are CGP and they're really, really good for literature. Um, and then in the middle, at the top, you can see Inspector Calls. There are some flashcards that CGP do that are fantastic. And you can take them out and um, your child can hand one to you a day and just say, you know, answer me these questions, ask me these questions. And if they don't get them right, what's a really good thing to do is to ask them again the next day until they do get them right. And then the ones on the left of the screen, the Collins Snap Revision, the orange and the pink ones, are fantastic for language um, but Colin Snap do really good ones for literature as well and they have fantastic um, essay examples in the Colin Snap ones too. Now your child would have also been put into a maths or a English and English tutor group um, and your child also would have seen a version of the slide on the board so this is to help them through this year and give them an extra hour and a half a week of English support if it is an English tutor group they've been chosen to be put in. Um, but we've spent a lot of time looking at maths and English assessment results, NGRT, the reading data, their confidence in that subject um, to make sure that they're in the right place, be it maths or English. Um, and there is a possibility that they could change tutor group depending on their two mock windows. So say, for example, they're in an English tutor group now but their maths mock needs a little bit more work, then it might be that they move into a maths mock, uh, sorry, maths tutor group to support them. So actually, their tutor is there to support them with maths or English for those three days a week where they do half an hour of that subject. 
Um, a lot of students have asked, why are we doing more English? So the key thing is it gives you revision skills. So they've had half term on Thursdays of being taught how to revise. Um, it also gives them really good communication skills um, to be able to communicate what they need to revise um, and communication skills from English. It also prepares them for their exams really well. So we do talk about how to approach single questions um, and therefore that will help them to apply for university apprenticeships or college courses. And actually what's been really useful is that it closes any gaps. So if they've had any absences, it closes those gaps as well. But ultimately it's to stretch them and to make sure that they're doing the most and trying the best that they possibly can. So in these sessions, we cover the same content as what is taught in the lessons to support the learning of the current curriculum so that it doesn't feel like anything new. And this helps them to learn because brains learn through repetition, retrieval and practice. So that's what we do to make sure that the knowledge we're teaching them becomes embedded into their long term memory. So further study at post 16. There are a couple of options if students want to continue English after GCSE. So we do AQA A level English literature and we choose the B specification, which is a fellow. Richard II, The Great Gatsby, Oliver Twist, Atonement, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, so we teach tragedy and crime, um, and that's taught by either myself, Miss Snow, Mrs Osborne, Miss Manners and Mrs Wenmouth, we're the four English literature A-level teachers, or there's another option which is EDUCAS or WJEC A-level film studies. Um, which is a fantastic option if you love narratives and stories, but perhaps you're not a huge reader um, and actually prefer watching films, because it's a very similar idea where you're analysing a film, um, but those teachers for that qualification are Mr Lintel and Mr Crawford. Thank you so much for your time. If you do have any questions, please pop myself or any of the other English teachers um, an email um, and we'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you.